Yes, welcome to Dallas Online again. It is economic session. Uh, now we are going to discuss uh, the topic of employment and unemployment. So we have economics as our subject. Now the topic we have employment and unemployment. Our subtopic. Now, this topic is one of the interesting topic in economics. Uh, it is interesting because it is a topic which is very useful. Uh, remember, this time we are concentrating much on the competence-based syllabus or competent-based uh, questions of which, after grasping knowledge from the class, it demands you to apply it. After grasping knowledge from the class. It demands you to apply it in real life or where we are, where we are living. For example, this topic, it is dealing with the issues of employment, unemployment. And remember, unemployment is one of the complex problems which the economy is facing. You can find even those developed countries like United States, they face the problem of unemployment. So it is a topic which it is very useful. And sometimes as economists, you have to apply it and even advising the government on how these problems can be solved in the economy. Now, in this topic, there are some of the subparts which they are not, they are sometimes bringing problems in solving uh, questions. And today, we are going to focus on two aspects uh, which are will deal on the issue of underemployment, underemployment, and full employment. Now, these are the two items which we are going to focus in today's discussion, uh, underemployment and full employment. Probably, you might know what is underemployment in general view. But you may not go very deep in understanding how does it occur in the economy. When we say underemployment, what do we mean? And how does it occur in the economy? You might have an idea of full employment, but you may not be sure if we have full employment in the economy. That is, so to, uh, come with me so that we're going to discuss. And after this lesson, you will be capable to differentiate between underemployment, full employment, and other forms of un unemployment. And probably, you will be capable to apply these items in different aspects of life. Now, let's start with the underemployment. Underemployment. What do you understand when you say underemployment? Remember, employment, employment as employment, is that state where a resource, a productive resource is employed. Any resource, whether labor, capital, land, or whatever, a productive resource is implies employment. In terms of labor, when you say employment, is when a person who is willing and able to work find a job. It means that person has qualification, that person is fit enough, then he has a job, he's looking for a job and he has that job. Then we say there is employment. Now when we say underemployment, what do we mean? Now we say underemployment uh, is the situation, situation where some, someone's capacity to work is underutilized. That is the meaning of underemployment. That is a situation where someone's capacity to work, someone's ability to work is underutilized. What do we mean? It means see, this person has the ability to work for 10 hours. Now is working below 10 hours. That is underutilization of that ability because this man, this person is capable to cultivate a farm uh, a day, maybe for 10 hours, for 11 hours. But the employer has employed him and is working only for six hours. That is underutilization of someone's capacity because your capacity is not yet uh, utilized. Then we can also say underemployment is, it occurs when a person, a person, we say a person perform a job which does not give him or her 
full utilization full utilization of his or her ability that is underemployment that is a person is employed is working but is working in a condition where that job do not give him full utilization of the capability full utilization of the uh, of what he or she has it means the person or the labor is delivering less than what he or she has that's why i said someone is capable to work for 10 hours but has been employed somewhere where he is working or she is working for less than that 10 hours then we say it means the bit of that person in that job is underutilized because the job is not giving that person to make full utilization of his or her capacity this is when we speak of under employment so this Items, they are very common, or these situations are very common in the economy because there is a possibility that in all aspects of life there are people, they are employed, but in reality they are underutilized because they are working below their capacity or they are working below the time required. Now, uh, conditions which may lead to uh, this one. Conditions, conditions for this form of unemployment. Conditions for this form of underemployment. Now, some conditions can lead to this form of underemployment. We have number one, when there is the so-called disguised, disguised unemployment. And remember, disguised unemployment, it is going in line with the hidden unemployment. It means where there is disguised unemployment, we expect underemployment to be there. Why? Because this guy's unemployment, we remember uh, in this form of unemployment, even the marginal product of a labor is always equal to what? To zero. Because we remember in this situation of hidden unemployment, uh, the number of people employed in that particular job is greater than the job they are doing. That is disguised. That means you can find the people they are working, they are employed, but in reality they are not employed because their marginal product is equal to zero because it means when you take one labor out from that office, nothing will be affected because their marginal product was zero. Now, for example, you find an, a, a certain office uh, demands only two secretaries, two secretaries, but those employed, they are five. It means the normal working mechanism demands two people to work there. But the office has employed five of them. It means see, those three added workers, they are disguised in nature. They are hidden. They are employed, but in little sense they are not working. Because even when you take some of them out of their current job, the marginal product is zero. Just because uh, the job uh, has employed many people than they required. The job requires only two, but now they, are they have employed five. We have maybe in a certain school, it demands only uh, ten teachers. But there are 20 teachers. It means some of the teachers, they, are hid they have hidden in unemployment just because we have employed many people than the requirement of that job. Now, for that case, we say that is hidden. So in that case, where there is disguised unemployment, we expect underemployment because if the job demands two people and there are five people employed, it means they are underutilized because the job could be completed by only two people, but there are five people. That means those people, they are underutilized because they will be working below their capacity because the work could be completed just by two people now you are five there that is disguised the second condition uh, we have this one when uh, someone a job you uh, a job someone is doing is not in line with the, his or her training when someone is employed in a job which is not of his or her own training what do we mean here it means you might be employed with a very good job but the job you are doing is not your qualification is not the one you trained to for example you have people who have been trained as accountants now because of lacking accounting jobs they become teachers so it, in that case, that person, there is underemployment because that person has been trained as accountant and is prepared to be accountant. But because of lacking accounting jobs, this person is a teacher. So it means, see, despite this accountant working as a teacher, there is somewhere in this 
uh, in this job is missing because he's not a pure teacher because he was not trained to be a teacher he was or she was trained to be accountant now because of lacking job in accountants then that person is a teacher someone uh, has been trained uh, as an engineer now because of lacking engineering jobs then that person has opted uh, to become accountant that that means you'll be working below the requirement because the job you are doing is not of your training so if you find there are these conditions for example even in tanzania this situation they are very common where you find because of ongoing uh, in unemployment rate people they are working in jobs which they are not trained that's why they are not working to their fully uh, capacity just because they are doing a job which is not of their training now uh, this uh, for example if as i said someone who has been trained as an uh, engineer that is qualification showing that this person is engineer but this time this person is working as accountant somewhere in a certain office now this is a uh, misuse of that resource another condition which can cause uh, unemployment or hidden and underemployment we say it is when a person a person is too over qualified to the work he or she is doing if you find someone is employed but the work that person is doing is less than the qualification that person has then we say that is there is underemployment when we say is too overqualified that means your qualification they are above what you are doing for example let's say in teaching someone who is owning a master degree of education then is teaching a kindergarten school how do you see this person is having a master degree in education of any subject but because of lacking employment because of the qualification he has probably then he has decided just to work as a teacher of a kindergarten school that is underemployment because the capacity of that person with the master degree is required to be working in the condition where he requires masters but now this person is teaching kindergarten this person is is teaching standard three this person is teaching form one with a master degree this is underemployment so you can find as if a person is working or employed but economically that person ability is underutilized then there is uh, underemployment in that situation another one Another condition which can cause uh, underemployment, we have the so-called working, working less, less hours than the required. Working less hours than the required. If someone is working less time, less hours than the required time, then you say there is underemployment. For example, as I said, in, in different offices, you find the working time, maybe it is eight or ten hours. But some of the people, they are just working for six, seven, or five hours, then they are out of the office. That is underemployment. It means that person is paid a salary, is paid a wage, but in reality, there is underemployment there because that habit of that person is underutilized because we employed you to work for 10 hours in the office, but you are working for only six hours. You are working only for two hours. Then the less of the hours you are not in the office. That means there is underemployment. So underemployment can also exist when someone is working less time or less hours than the required time then you say there is also the so-called hidden uh, unemployment so this case of underemployment they are very common in in the economy because and specifically for in public office uh, in public office this is very common public office uh, public offices those offices which they are employing pub, uh, civil uh, servants you find maybe in different offices the requirement for that office there are only two people but there are 10 people working there because the government needs to employ people but if employment opportunities they are not enough that means they can keep on employing people on the same uh, on the same uh, job for that case you can find so many people in one area but they are just employed and they are underutilized in terms of their capacity this is the condition which can cause uh, which can lead to uh, this one now let's check the so-called causes of underemployment causes of underemployment in short, we check the causes of under 
employment. What causes someone to be underemployed? What are the causes of this one? Number one, it is lack, or you can say shortage, of job opportunities. Opportunities. Shortage of job opportunities. Now, in the economy, if there are few job vacancies, there are few job opportunities, while there are majority looking for that job, will end up employing people uh, in repetition. We can employ many people in one area just because there are no new opportunities. So we'll be employing people in the same opportunities. For example, I said maybe, uh, let's say for example, maybe in, in education. The public schools, they might be the same each year. And uh, we have these maybe from one school to those, uh, uh, those other schools. Now, the same school, they are not added, but each year, maybe the government is employing teachers. It means we employ teachers or employ nurses or doctors in the same hospital. Hospitals, hospitals they are the same. Schools, they are just the same. But we are employing new teaching staff, employing new health staffs in the same employment opportunities to reach a time when the number of people employed will be greater than the job they are doing. Then for that case, you'll find the, the, uh, underemployment there. And this case, it is very common in developing countries because employment opportunities, they are limited, but uh, the job seekers, they are many. So we have to employ them in the same uh, employment opportunities. Then you can find a lot of people in, uh, in one area. Then they are doing less than what is required. The second cause, we have rapid population growth or rapid population uh, population increase or growth when population is increasing rapidly why did the employment opportunity as we said they are limited we expect to have underemployment because we'll be having majority uh, in the economy but the employment opportunity they are just the same then you have to employ those majority in the same so in countries where there is high population increase it is very possible to find disguise and employment especially i said in public offices especially in developing countries it is very easy to find these hidden which is causing this one it means due to rapid population increase and the, those people that are going in training in universities in colleges in training centers then they are becoming a labor force now, as they become labor force, that means they have to be employed partly, or all of them. For that case, they can cause hidden or they can cause underemployment. Another cause, uh, we have uh, poor, or you can say low wage. Some of the employers, they are paying poor or low wage, very low wage. I imagine you have employed someone who has to work for eight or 10 hours. Then you pay him monthly, they say 200,000. What do you expect commitment from this person? You have employed him, then monthly receiving 200,000, including transport and everything. Or even with the current economy where there are inflations, you pay him even 400,000 or her, 400,000. Do you expect this person to be much committed all the time to be in the office there working? Someone is owning a master degree, employed as teacher somewhere. Then that person is paid uh, 600,000. What do you expect? This person cannot be committed in that job. Will be working less than the required hours because the amount paid is very small, which is reducing commitment for that person to work. So you can find someone in the office is working 10, uh, 6 hours, seven hours, five hours. The reason is because it's not well paid. Because of poor wage or low wage, then this person is looking for another alternatives to earn uh, his or her life. For that case, he will be working than the required. Then there will be underemployment when there are uh, those I said uh, poor wage or low wage. Then another one, we have the so-called uh, issues like uh, cheap, cheap wage labor. This is different from low wage, cheap la la wage labor. Some of the employers, they, they are likely to, uh, to be paying low wage or to employ cheap labor. If the company employs cheap labor, that means it will be capable to employ many people per time. For example, if the job, uh, let's say we have two, uh, two, uh, two firms. We have firm A, we have firm B. These firms, they are, doing, uh, they, are, they are owning the same business. Let's say in firm A, a worker is paid uh, 1 million in firm A. Then in firm B, the same job, a worker is paid 500,000. It means see, this firm B is looking for cheap labor because these workers here, they are paid cheap. Probably they are cheap workers. It means this person here or this firm here can employ many people as he or she need. 
But this one, because maybe the wage is high, can reduce the number of workers to be employed. So here, it is not possible to find hidden unemployment. Not possible to find unemployment because this firm will be employing only required people. But here, because wage is cheap, you can employ many people. Then employing many people, it is very possible to find the underemployment here because of cheap workers. So cheap, you employ many, indicating to maybe to minimize costs or whatever, but at the end, you will find underemployment in the company or in that institute. So these are some of the conditions which they can, uh, they can cause, or they are causes of underemployment in most of uh, developing economies. But also you can add one here, mind you, well, you can add one here, like here. We say poor, slide here, poor supervision of workers. If workers are poorly supervised, there is no clear supervision of workers at the working place. It is very easy for them to work under the required time. If the management is not well supervising them, you can find workers they might be underemployed because they can work below the required time. For example, for those full-time workers, if the required time, which is maybe to work uh, five, uh, seven, uh, five to seven hours each day per, per week, that means some they can be working below that uh, five hours, below that seven hours, just because there are poor supervision in the office. So the poor supervision can make rules for the workers to be underemployed in that condition. Then let's complete with the effect. Uh, effect. Sorry. Uh, effects of underemployment. Effect number one. Underemployment results to poor, poor services or output produced. If the economy is operating under underemployment, we expect the output produced to be of low quality, to be poor. What do you expect if you find the workers are underemployed? They are working below the required time. Or as we said, someone who is doing a job which is not in line with the training, we expect the output produced or the service delivered to be of poor quality. Then the second one, it causes low efficiency and the productivity. Economically, we know efficiency. Uh, and productivity of a worker or labor. Remember we said efficiency or productivity of labor is a bit of a labor to produce output of greater efficiency and greater quantity. That is productivity. Now, if a labor is underemployed, we expect low efficiency from him. We expect low productivity from her because of underemployment. Another one, there is misuse of resource. It causes mis sorry, misuse of resources. It means with underemployment, resources are misused. Because, for example, I said, someone who has been trained as an accountant is now teaching. What do you expect? That resource is misused because we expect this person to be an accountant, but now is a teacher. Uh, we expect this uh, uh, person to be a doctor, but now is an accountant. That means there is misuse of resource there. Because you have to take a counter to be an accountant and a doctor to be a doctor. That is one of the effects. And the last effect of underemployment, it can uh, fall fall in the quality of labor. Now, if most of the offices, their workers are underemployed, it can cause fall in the quality of labor. For example, I said these people have been trained as accountant. Now they are working as teachers. It means the quality of teacher is falling. Because it means everyone can become a teacher. Just because uh, a person has been trained as an accountant, now is a teacher. A person has been trained, I don't know, as an engineer, now is a teacher. So the quality for a teacher may fall just because of underemployment. Because some people have been hidden there, but they are not of their qualifications. Uh, teaching is just an example. It's not general. For that case, these are some of the effects which we can find in underemployment. Now, having seen uh, underemployment, let's check the last part, which we said the full employment. Full employment. This also is not a new concept uh, for you, Form 6, because this revision is uh, special for Form 6. Now, this full employment concept, it is not new. It is very useful, and you might understand it. Now, full employment, what does it mean? Full employment is that is the state or situation, the state where the number of job uh, job seekers 
is equal to the number of job vacancies available. That is full employment. So when we say full employment in the economy, in that situation where the number of people who are looking for job, job seekers, is equivalent or is equal to the number of job vacancies available. It means if there are 10 people looking for a job, and the job vacancies there are also 10, then you say the economy is at full employment because the number of job seekers is equal to the number of uh, job vacancies available. This is full employment. It means uh, for full employment to exist uh, economically, that means there should be no idle resource. If it is in the form of labor, that means no idle labor there. That means all labor are employed, all capital employed, etc., etc. So it means all people who are willing and able to work, they have jobs. Then we say there is a full employment. So full employment is where the number of job uh, seeker is equal to the number of job vacants available. Now, different econ economists, they have viewed the, the concept of full employment in different ways. Uh, different economists, they have viewed uh, the concept of full employment in different ways. For example, we have case one, uh, the Keynesian, Keynesian view. How do Keynes uh, view the issue of full employment? This is one of the common uh, economists. Now, according to Keynes, when we say full employment, it occurs uh, when uh, the number of people who are able and, and willing to work is equal to the job, jobs available. That is according to Keynesian. That when you speak of full employment, that is the situation where the number of people who are willing and able, because sometimes in economics, people might be able, but they're not willing to work. Now, you should be willing and able. Ability here, as we said in defining unemployment, ability is marked either by physical or mental because a labor delivers services either mentally or physically. Physically means you don't use your mental. But for those professions, training, like teaching, uh, maybe the, in health services, engineering, accountant, whatever, that means people, they use mental. But in physical jobs, for example, in those casual works, people, they use their physical ability, the strength of their bodies, uh, like loading and unloading in, in the bus stands, in the stations, whatever. That is the use of physical of someone. So it means you must be able, physically or mentally, then you are willing. So according to kindness, when these people who are willing and able to work, they, uh, the, their number is equal to the jobs available, then we say the economy is at full employment. What do we mean? It means here, according to kindness, there should be, there should be no, uh, no element, element of voluntary voluntary unemployment. It means for this kind of full employment to, or to exist according to kindness, the economy should not have voluntary unemployment. Remember, voluntary unemployment is when someone is able but is not willing to work. Someone has gone to school, has qualifications, is uh, maybe a, own, a holder of bachelor degree of a certain profession, but is not willing to work because of different reasons. Some maybe because uh, their home, they are very rich. Some they are depending from their past saving. Some they have got enough income, so they don't want to work. But they have qualification, but they are not willing to work. They are just at home, staying at home, eating, and they get everything. So they find working is wastage of time. So for them, they are, they are voluntarily decided not to work. So according to kindness, it means for full employment to exist, there should be no elements of voluntary unemployment. Then the second view, we view the idea of a classical view. Classical view. How do these, uh, these people view full employment? Now, according to them, these classical economists, they believe that uh, full employment, uh, full employment, is a common uh, situation 
in the economy. It is common or say normal situation. So according to these classical viewers, classical economists, they believe that full employment is very common in the economy. Very common. And according to them, if the economy is not at full employment, that situation is regarded as abnormal. Eh? Abnormal. It means if there is no full employment, for them, they consider the economy as abnormal. Because for them, to have full employment, it is very common. To the, economy, the employment to be at full, it is very common. So if there is no full employment, if there is no equilibrium in the labor market, that means the situation is abnormal. So they believe that uh, full employment is very common. But in reality, full employment to exist, it is something like idealistic, theoretical. We discuss issues of full employment where the number of job seeker is equal to the number of job uh, vacants available. But in reality, such situation to exist, it is in very rare cases to find such situation. In most time, full employment to exist, it is very difficult. And that's why we say full employment may not easily exist due to the following reasons. That means we cannot have full employment in the economy. And that's why I say, when we say full employment, we don't mean zero unemployment because there is possibility of having situations of unemployment during full employment. And when there is unemployment during full employment, this one is called as natural unemployment. Natural unemployment. Natural unemployment. It means, see, I said, full employment is not easy to exist. It's not easy. Because of different situation. Now, the unemployment which exists during full employment, it is called the natural rate of unemployment. So, natural rate of unemployment, it stands for all kind of unemployment which they exist even when the labor market is at equilibrium, as we said. Now, because we said uh, this is unemployment which exists even when the economy or the labor market is at full employment. It means even when the economy is at full employment, you can find the signs of unemployment existing. Because you said full employment, number of job seekers is equal to number of jobs available. But during that time, you can find some elements of unemployment existing. Now that one, they make unemployment, the full employment to be theoretical because even during full employment, there are kind of unemployment which they exist. Now, for example, during full employment, it is very easy to find the uh, unemployment like, number one, we have frictional unemployment. Uh, frictional unemployment. Now, frictional unemployment, remember, this is unemployment which occurs when someone leaves the pleasant job looking for another job, then that is frictional unemployment. For example, someone can be currently employed by company X, then leaving a job to look for another job. So the time from leaving and getting the other job, you'll be unemployed. So that is frictional unemployment. So even when the labor market is at equilibrium, there are people, go, uh, we call them as job seekers, whom they are always seeking for new jobs, green pastures. So they will be unemployed on the way. Then there is frictional unemployment. But also during full employment, the economy can also uh, be affected by seasonal change, which can create seasonal uh, unemployment. Seasonal unemployment. It can exist. So seasonal, it means this unemployment which occurs due to changes in the seasons, especially for those activities which we call them as primal activities, they depend much from climate, from weather. For example, agriculture, uh, issues of mining, fishing, uh, tourism. These uh, activities, they are much uh, depending on the climate. So when the seasonal changes, we expect the production of those activities to change, which can also cause unemployment. For example, in agriculture, people may be employed during planting season, cultivating season, and harvesting season. When those seasons are over, that means they become unemployed. Likewise, in, the, in the tourism, we have those good time of tourism, and we have those bad time of tourism. For that case, you can be employed in one season, then be unemployed in another season. That is, so even during full employment, you can, ex you can find such kind of unemployment existing. We have also a uh, residual unemployment can exist. Residual unemployment. Remember, 
this kind of unemployment, it is an employment which occurs to people who are uh, disabled people. Uh, disabled people mentally and the physical disabled people. Sometimes you can find someone who is uh, mentally disabled but is willing to work but mentally is not okay. Uh, that is unemployment. So that is residual unemployment. So for that case, if we find during full employment there are disabled people, mentally disabled and physically disabled. Mentally means those people who are mentally not okay. When we say physically disabled, it means uh, physically, for example, maybe uh, those, uh, maybe they are, they, are, they are crippled, some they have leg problems, uh, looking problems, all of the problems that they are disabled. So they can be looking for a job, but because of disabilities, they cannot be employed. For example, they can find maybe company X is looking for uh, someone to be employed. But if they're going to ask for a job, they say no, because you have this disability, you're not to be employed. So during full employment, these people they are, are there, these people who are disabled mentally and physically. So you can find the residual unemployment during uh, full employment. We have another one like uh, the so-called uh, structural unemployment. This is which occurs due to change the structure of the economy, structural unemployment. Uh, this is another case for this form of uh, full unemployment. Structural unemployment, this is unemployment which occurs due to change in such of the economy, especially mismatch between demand and supply in the economy. When that occurs, it can cause unemployment. And the last one, which may be new to some of you, it is the so-called surplus, surplus unemployment. This is also a form of unemployment which can exist during full employment. What is this? I know this one might have idea, but this one may be new to some of you. Surplus unemployment, this is an employment which occur when the government intervenes in the labor market. It means it occurs when, when the government intervene, intervenes in, in the labor market. Uh, in the labor market with the minimum minimum wage the so called remember minimum wage we we'll, we'll study in the part in the topic of production in the part of theory of distribution especially in wage you discuss the minimum wage now when the government intervene the labor market by setting or fixing a minimum wage that minimum, man, minimum wage may discourage some of the employers. Because remember, minimum wage is a wage which is set above equilibrium wage. Uh, if you remember in short, that is a wage which is set above equilibrium wage. Remember, if we have equilibrium wage like this, this is number of labor, and this is wage for those labor. If we, we have demand for labor, this is demand for labor, and we have uh, supply for labor, Supply for labor. It means see, where there is interaction between demand and supply for labor. This point, it is determining wage. This is the equilibrium wage. So it means according to demand and supply, workers should be paid this wage, WE. This is equilibrium wage. But maybe if the government uh, think that uh, this wage is not good, it is not good to workers, then it's going to set the minimum wage. Maybe now minimum wage to be here. For example here, maybe now, this is wage one, now will be the wage set by the government, which is called the minimum wage. Now this wage, it is above the equilibrium wage, and it is set to protect workers. Now for that case, some of the employers, especially private employers, uh, they may think that this wage is very expensive for them to pay. So they can control that uh, situation by reducing number of workers in the employment. For example, now all of the company in the economy, they can start reducing workers, reducing workers, because they cannot pay this wage. Now on reducing them, that means they become unemployed. Now the system where these people, they become unemployed because the government has intervened in the labor market, then you say that is called the surplus unemployment that is caused by intervention of the government labor market then resulting into unemployment and these are some of the unemployment or some of the situations which they can cause full employment not to exist to the maximum because of these uh, situations now this is the end of this uh, elaboration we get a short break then you'll come to solve some questions there so welcome back after the short break now we have to solve uh, some uh, question there, then one of them is going to be a homework uh, for you. Now the first question, uh, question number one, it is asking, the concept of full employment is myth and theoretical. Justify this statement using examples. 
The concept of full employment is myth and theoretical. Justify this statement using examples. Now, recall from what we did or explained. We said full employment is the situation where the number of job seekers is equal to the number of job vacants available. And we said this concept in reality, it cannot exist easily in reality. Though uh, it can exist, but to exist it is in a very rare case. And sometimes it is not possible even to happen in some of the economies. That the number of job seekers is equal to the number of jobs available. Now when we say this uh, concept is myth, myth something which is uh, thought but not existing. That is myth. It is not existing in reality. Theoretical, something which we speak, we discuss, but is not existing. So it means this question is demanding you to show how full employment cannot exist. Now, as I said in the discussion, full employment, uh, during full employment, it does not mean zero unemployment because there are some signs of unemployment which together call them as natural unemployment can exist. So can answer this question by showing those conditions or those unemployments which they can exist even when the economy is at full employment. We said there are those disabled people, there is residual unemployment, we said season, we said issues of frictional employment. So those, they are the ones which they make full employment to be myth and theoretical because they make it not to happen in reality. That is for the first question. Then the second question, where we can have a minor concentration there, it is asking recently different countries in the world including Tanzania, are complaining on increased, uh, increased rate of unemployment due to eruption of COVID-19. Show, show this COVID-19 has increased the rate of unemployment and suggest the possible solutions for unemployment in LODCs. It means we have the ongoing problem of COVID-19. And according to the question, many countries in the world, including Tanzania, they are complaining about increased rate of unemployment due to COVID-19. Now, show how this uh, COVID-19 has increased the rate of unemployment and suggest the possible solution for unemployment in LODCs. Now, what can we do there? It means, one, the first part, it has to show how COVID-19 has caused unemployment. That is the first case. How COVID-19 has caused unemployment. We discuss there. Then later on we are going to suggest the solutions for unemployment in LODC. LODC means less developed countries including Tanzania because they are, they are also facing the problem of unemployment to the maximum. Now you have to give solutions on this one. But before we have to show how the COVID-19 has resulted into increased rate of unemployment in many parts of the world. Now, COVID-19, it is the coronavirus disease of 2019. And this disease, it is the one which is, uh, now it is a pandemic which, is, uh, which has spreaded everywhere in the world. And how does it cause unemployment? Now, in short, you can say, number one, there is rate of unemployment because of LODC. Number one, it is due to uh, closure, closure of who? Industries. It means some industries have been closed because of the ongoing disease. Remember, worldwide, the report they are showing that, for example, last week, the unemployment rate in the United States it was going above 10%, which, according to them, this is the highest rate of unemployment to be recorded in the United States. And the reason is because some industries have been closed. Now, on closing those industries, those people who have, been, who have been employed, they are no longer employed. That means unemployment already because of COVID-19. We have different industries which they are processing and producing different goods. They have been closed because of this problem. Now, for that case, closure of these industries, manufacturing industries, processing industries, they have created unemployment. But the cause is because of this disease, COVID-19. It has caused the closure of these industries which, uh, uh, which they are going on. Number two, we have the so-called... Uh, the so-called lockdown, lockdown situation. The lockdown situation where if we make follow-up in different countries of the world, uh, one of the measures to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to prevent this disease, they have locked down their countries. There are those partial lockdown and complete 
lockdown. Partial lockdown, including uh, some of the office not opening, that is partial, but complete, including people not getting out of the houses, that is complete lockdown. We have neighboring like Kenya, Uganda, they had the same, Rwanda, they have the same, that they have locked down their country, that there are people, they are not allowed to get out of their working place. Some they have gone for 14 days. For example, Rwanda, they have gone for 40 days, and yesterday they have allowed them to start getting out from their homes. Now, just because of this situation, then they have caused unemployment because these people, who we were expecting them to be in the office working. We are expecting them to be in different operation, but they are now at home being unemployed. So lockdown situation, because of COVID-19, it has created unemployment in the economy. But also, we have another reason, which we say uh, increased uh, technology, increased technology during this time. Now, this time, due to COVID-19, different employers, different institutes, different companies, they have decided to use modern technology to solve different activities. For example, some of the companies, they have reduced the workers, then those who have remained, they are working from home. How do they work? They work through internet, they work through different communication devices. Now, this case, they have created unemployment because due to technology, now people, they have reduced from the office, then those few remaining, they are working from home. Now, in that working from home, that means to be working less than the required time, and the number of labor has been reduced. So, due to this technology, which is applied recently, then it has caused the unemployment in different uh, parts of the world. And the last cause, uh, or how the COVID has caused unemployment, it is fall in aggregate aggregate demand for in aggregate demand it means see, aggregate demand ad we know it is the total demand of a country or of a society it means see, we have individual demand personal demand i have my own demand you have your own demand then the total demand of the economy we say that is aggregate demand now recently due to covid-19 aggregate demand has fallen why because People, the consumption has fallen, and some of the people, they have bought the goods and services in a package, in bulk, they are at home. For example, some of them have bought maybe foodstuffs in a pack, in, in, in the back, they are at home. They are no longer moving into those markets. So it means the total demand for goods and services in the economy has fallen. It means producers, they cannot go on producing while the demand has gone down. That's why now production has fallen, demand has fallen, then unemployment has uh, resulted because uh, of those two aspects. Foreign aggregate demand has led to the fall in production, which has led to the fall in, in, in employment because of fall in production. So these are some of the items or some of the concepts which they are showing that the COVID-19, it has increased unemployment in many parts of the world. Then the last part it was asking suggests the possible solutions for unemployment in LODCs. Now go back to what we did in the class, the measures to measures or solutions to an employment measures or solutions to unemployment you did in the class and i've discussed so many solutions or so many measures which can be taken by the government uh, and other stakeholders to solve the problem of unemployment. Remember, even Tanzania is among the countries which they are facing the problem of unemployment. Now, try to recall from those education system, from the technology, and all other aspects which we can do to reduce the problem of unemployment. For example, we can say one of the, uh, it is improvement in education system. That is just a view to how to go through. It means one of the solutions of unemployment in LODCs, it is to improve our education system. This is one of the biggest problems we are facing. Because our education system is preparing uh, graduates for white collar jobs. White collar jobs means official works. Someone is studying engineering, but is also waiting for employment. Someone is studying a certain entrepreneurship skills, but waiting for employment. That means the education we are getting is not preparing us for self-employment. It is preparing us for being employed somewhere. But if we revise our education system, then preparing people that if you cannot be employed in the office, then you can employ yourself. Then that one can also be a solution to unemployment. But also we can improve technology. We improve technology. How? 
improvement technology can make those activities which were not conducted in one season to be conducted in another season. For example, in agriculture, in developing countries, large percent of people, they are depending from agriculture. And employment is coming from agriculture and other primary based activities. So now to solve unemployment in these LODCs, because I say they depend much from agriculture, we have to improve technology. How? If we improve technology, for example, in those season, for example, during uh, when it is maybe a, a drought or when it is hot season, it means with technology, instead of stopping conducting agricultural activities, we can use irrigation schemes. Because technology is allowing us to use maybe channeling or watering by any means, but technology will be allowing us to conduct agricultural activities even when the uh, season is not allowing because we have a good technology. So we can irrigate through different system of irrigation. So this is one of the methods. But another measure, it is uh, population control. Population control. One of the problems which is causing unemployment in the LODCs, it is a rapid population increase. It means the late population is increasing faster than the late of uh, the, 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 is the community to create employment opportunities. Try to take even in Tanzania. How many new opportunities are created each year? But how many people are graduating from schools and from universities every year? How many universities do we have? So it means to solve that problem, we have to control population. Because population is increasing fast, but the rate of creation of employment opportunities, it is very small. Now for that case, we can control unemployment by, uh, by controlling population. Then the other one, we can use labor intensive techniques. Intensive technique, intensive technique. It means in some of the countries, LODCs, they apply capital intensive. It means they use more capital than labor. Now, if you use capital intensive, it means you will employ less labor. So to avoid that problem, you have to use labor intensive. Whether you use more labor, less capital, then you reduce the rate of unemployment. Another one, it is proper uh, mobilization and allocation of money, money power, that is another one. Then the other one, uh, we can use expansionary monetary policy. Expansionary monetary policy. Remember, expansionary monetary policy means those policies of monetary issue which they are aiming at increasing money supply in the economy. That means increasing money supply, either by the use of open market operation, by the use of interest rates, by use of special credits. All of them, there will be increasing money supply, uh, making credit to be available, then increasing production, then creating more employment opportunities. Uh, number seven, we have delocalization. Uh, delocalization of industries. It means in most of the areas, industries are located in one area. For example, in Tanzania, most of the industries, they are located in a few regions. You can find along the coast, plus Dar es Salaam, Mbea, maybe Patri, Arusha. Then the rest of the regions, if you find industry, it is very rare. Now, to reduce unemployment, it means we have to, uh, to delocalize. means these industries should be decentralized in different parts of the country. You find maybe industries in Mtwala, you find industries in Kigoma, you find industries in Ilinga, some in Dar es Salaam, in all regions, so that all people in different regions, they are easily accessible to employment. Then this also can reduce unemployment in the economy. That is what we can do. And these are some of the solutions you can take to reduce unemployment in LODCs. This is for the second question. Then the last question, which is number three, it will be taken as homework. The question is uh, asking, discuss the costs and benefits of unemployment in a country like Tanzania. Discuss the costs and benefits of unemployment in a country like Tanzania. When you say cost, it means negative effects of unemployment. But also unemployment, it has benefits, advantages. So it is like he discuss the merit and demerits of unemployment in a country like Tanzania. Now, this is the end of our interesting uh, session of unemployment and employment. And I wish you the best. We meet next lesson and good day.